To whoever this may impact, sometimes our lives have to be completely shaken up, changed, and rearranged to relocate is where we're really meant to be. Sometimes change feels like loss, transformation is scary, and sometimes to discover the best version of ourselves, we must let go of absolutely everything holding us down. Welcome to I Missed Me, your new safe space. I Missed Me's purpose is to help people all around the world to come back home to themselves. It is a healing self-growth podcast that encourages people to dive deep into their emotions, heal their traumas, and ultimately love themselves. My name is Mafia Ansures, I am your host, and I hope to be a part of your healing journey. From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett with Wayne Morris and Andrea Leeds in Kid Galahad. Lux presents Hollywood. Our play, based on the original story by Francis Wallace, is the drama of a boxer's manager and of the two girls who love the boxer. Starring are Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett with Wayne Morris and Andrea Lee. While between the acts, we'll hear two of the most spectacular champions the ring has ever known, Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney. Louis Silvers conducts our music. We present the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I think the good St. Nicholas must have dropped the Lux Radio Theater, one of its Christmas gifts, a little early. Because tonight we have Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, Wayne Morris, and Andrea Leeds in that invigorating saga of flying fists, Kid Galahad. Mr. Robinson is a collector and a fight fan. He's collected the choicest adjectives of the critics for years. While his favorite collections nowadays are his pipes, his first editions some magnificent paintings, and the remarks of his young son. His enthusiasm for boxing gives him the background for his polished portrayal of a fighter's manager, the role he played on the screen in Kid Galahad, and repeats tonight as Nick Donati. Nick's particular friend in the play is called Fluff. Out of the play, she's called Joan Bennett, and one of Hollywood's loveliest ladies. Her five feet three inches are topped by blue eyes and blonde hair, and her constant companion is a spaniel named Lux, believe it or not. Mr. Wayne Morris, you may recall, exploded on the Hollywood horizon like a charge of dynamite when he slipped his fist into a pair of boxing gloves and became Kid Galahad on the screen. Among Wayne's ancestors was King Olaf of Norway, who lived some ten centuries ago, while Abraham Lincoln, Jefferson Davis, and Zachary Taylor figure in his American background. Tonight he plays Kid Galahad. Andrea Leeds is the beautiful Butte Montana girl who spent her younger years in Mexico and came to Los Angeles originally when an outlaw galloped up to her father's lonely ranch and informed him that Andrea would be missing unless 150,000 pesos were paid in 24 hours. Her father saved his daughter and the money by flying her hair. Andrea, born Antoinette, becomes Marie in our play. And that's the dramatic menu for our pre-Christmas feast. The curtain rises and the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett with Wayne Morris and Andrea Leeds in Kid Galahad. It's the main event at the Miami Fight Club. Chuck McGraw versus Danny Burke. Ten rounds to a decision. The two young heavyweights stand toe-to-toe in the center of the ring, the thud of their punches echoing dully above the roar of the crowd. In Danny Burke's corner, Nick Donati, the fighter's manager, glares savagely up into the ring. In vain, he signals Burke to slow down and stop carrying the fight. Then he turns to the trainer with a snarl of fury. He saw that signal. He's seen all of them. When did he start thinking he could outslug McGraw? I don't know what's happened to him, Nick. Maybe he's dazed. Oh, dazed nothing. He's had his orders for weeks. Look at him in there. Hey, what are you trying to pull? Stay away from him, do you hear me? Burke, use that left. Slow down. Oh, well, there's your answer. Fighting his own fight. Five, 
When he wakes up, tell him he's Nick, through. You can't mean that, Nick. I Seven. need it plenty. Where's Fluff? Eight. Oh, Fluff. Here, Nick. Come on, Nine. let's get out of here. We can swim oh. out after that splash. Oh, wait, you're crazy to dump him, Nick. You're throwing away a million dollars. He's still good for the title. Well, it wouldn't make any difference to me if he was a champ now. When a guy I handle starts thinking he has the brains and stops taking orders from me, he's out. Oh, but Nick, No he's use out. arguing, Silver. We'll see you later at the hotel. Well, what happens now? I suppose we start looking around for another fighter. Yeah. It's sort of getting to be a routine, Nick. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. Every time you bring a guy up above his own level, he gets thinking he knows it all and gets laid flat on the piece of gold leaf. Hmm, well, that's flat. Well, someday I'm going to find a guy that can go the whole distance and listen to orders all the way. I'm going to make him a champ. That is, unless that choice bunch of gangsters in McGraw's corner make McGraw the champ. Oh, well, don't worry. They won't stop me. Uh, that gun of Turkey Morgan's will stop anything, Nick. I get gray-headed when you tangle with him. Oh, forget it. If Burke had listened to me, he'd have been champion, Morgan or no Morgan. Nicky, did it ever occur to you that maybe Burke didn't want to be champion? Where'd you get that idea? He's fallen for a girl. Maybe he wants to quit and get married. How do you know? Just watching him develop the symptoms. I didn't notice anything. You don't see a lot of things, Nick. You get so wrapped up in the game, you forget that people are human and have feelings. Well, there isn't any room for feelings in this racket. Fighter's a machine, not a, a violin player. Hey, uh, maybe I forget you once in a while. Or do I? Yes, quite often. Yeah, I'm a mug for treating you that way, Fluff. That's right. Am I in the doghouse? No. Well, well, I am thinking about it. Now, you're swell, Fluff. And I know all you do for me, even if I don't say it. Now, you put up with a lot keeping me alive. <laughs> it's like riding head on a skyrocket. <laughs> I'm happy now. Uh, so am I. Just you keep slapping my ears down. Hmm? I will. I just wasn't close enough tonight. What, when I can that palooka? That's right. Oh, forget it. Uh, how much dough do we lose? 17,300. Well, how much have we got left? 1,800. 1,800. Well, might as well shoot that on a party and start over. Don't we always? Where's that bellhop? Anybody seen a bellhop around here? There he is, Nick. Oh. Well, about time. Mr. Donati? Yeah, I'm Mr. Donati. What'd you come up on, the freight elevator? Oh, I got here as soon as I could, sir. Oh, and you were out here, huh? Yes, sir. Hey, I'll bet you're the Mahuskas with the dames. The, the what, sir? Well, never mind, skip it. Uh, what's your name? Ward Geesenberry. What? Ward Ge... <laughs> hey, hey, everybody, listen to me. <laughs> Go on, I'll tell him your name, kid. <laughs> Ward Geesenberry. <laughs> How about letting him do some work? Well, all right. All right, Gooseberry, start mixing drinks. You'll find the stuff in the other room. Yes, sir. Come on, kid, I'll show you. Over this way. Start off with two gin rickies, a gin sling, four scotch, and... What's the matter with you? Well, I don't know how to mix those fancy drinks. Fancy? Are you kidding? No, ma'am. Don't you drink? No, ma'am. You don't smoke either, I suppose. No, I don't. Hmm... I didn't know there were any of your kind left. Why didn't you tell Nick you couldn't mix them? Well, they told me that he'd get me fired if I didn't give good service. Now, if you'd just show me how I'll be able to do it. Well, the general idea is to mix rye with ginger ale, scotch with soda, and gin with anything. I see. How much do you use of each? Uh, with that crowd, it doesn't make any difference. Come on, I'll help you. Yeah. What's going on in here? I've started the education of a nice boy, Nick. Yeah? I let the hotel educate him. That's what they're paid for. Well, it's my fault, Mr. Donati. I well, nobody asked it. you to sound off. Come on, get those drinks going. Yes, sir. Jealous, Nick? Yeah. Am I behind the eight ball? No. But someday that temper is going to throw you for a loss. <laughs> oh, no, not while you're around to flag you down. Uh, that's the trouble. I might not be around sometime. Oh, thinking of Morgan's mob again, huh? Oh, a lot of things. Hey, what did you worry about before you met me? Oh, I give up. Nick, you're such a fool. Well, I sort of like you, too. Oh, Nick. Oh, come on. Come on in, Silver. What's up? Say, I just found out why Burke went haywire last night. Yeah? What? Well, he got 25 grand to double-cross you and take a dive. Who paid him? Turkey Morgan. He was afraid of Burke's long-range fighting, and he wasn't taking any chances. Burke got the dough on the train. Yeah? Nick, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to pay that punch-strung gunman off. You're going to get yourself filled full of holes. You think I'm going to let him get away with a double cross? You drive me crazy. Are you always going to throw the whole works out of the window because that temper of yours breaks out in a rash? Don't let him know. Sit back and keep him off guard. You can outsmart him out of his shirt. I wouldn't start anything with him now, boss. He just come in. What, Morgan here? Yeah, him and McGraw with a couple of blondes. Take it easy, Nick, okay. for my sake. Okay, okay. 
I'll go and make him feel at home. Well, well, hello, Nick. How are you, Morgan? Thought we'd drop in and tell you we were sorry you and your fighter busted up. Yeah? Well, I'm glad you came. More the merrier. Hello, Nick. Hello, McGraw. Glad to see me, Nick. Hi, certainly. <laughs> no hard feelings because you polished off my fighter? If all your scraps were as easy as that one, you'll be champion yet. Is that a crack? Now, why would it be a crack? Quit sounding off, Chuck. This is a party. Why, certainly. A pa- Go on now. Make yourself at home. Hello there, Lammy Pa. Will you have a drink, miss? Look, girls, he blushes. Uh, who's that guy over there? Oh, uh, oh him? Uh, just the bellhop. Hey, looks as if your blonde might be going for a Morgan. Yeah? I'll see you later. Come on, Mr. Gooseberry. Dance with me. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I don't dance. What do you do? Not much of anything, I guess. Oh, but you're awful cute. Hey, you. Come here. What's the matter, Morgan? Did you call me, sir? Yeah, I called you. Hey, that's pretty high-class monkey suit you got on, kid. But the pants are kind of long for a boy scout. Maybe we ought to cut them down a little bit, huh? Oh, 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 look at that. Right off at the knees. Boy, that Morgan's a riot. Wait a minute, Morgan. Why don't you leave the kid alone? He wasn't doing anything Keep to you. Keep out of this, you. Don't you push her. Not why, you dirty lot. And if you touch her again, I'll... Yeah, what is this? What, what goes on here? It's all right, Nick. McGraw made a little pass at me, and the kid nailed him. That's all. That's all? Where is the old murderer? I'm sorry, Mr. Donati. Come on, get out of here. You caused enough trouble. Well, I only wanted Go to... Go on, get... I'll beat it. I said beat it. Yes, sir. Nick, are you going to make that kid have to pay for a ruined uniform? Now, forget it. All right. If you won't pay for it, I will. Hey, what's the idea, Nick? Trying to frame my fighter into breaking his hands? No, I never saw that bellhop before. McGraw hadn't been drinking. That kid never would have got one started. I'll fix him up. What, and get yourself thrown in the can? Now, wait a minute. I, I got a better idea. And a lot of people don't like your cute now, I'm ideas. I'm talking to McGraw. Why don't you let your brother take it out of his hide in the ring? Uh, it's okay with me, just so he gets a paste. What's the matter, Nick? Sore because Fluff took out after him? Yeah. Yeah. What makes you think you can get him to fight McGraw's brother? Well, did you ever see a bellhop that didn't want to be a fighter? I'll speak to him in the morning. <laughs> Stand over there, kid, and let's get a good look at you. Hey, where did you learn to punch like that? We had sort of a boxing club. You know, the fellows that worked on the different farms. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, how would you like to be a fighter? Why, I never thought much about it. Now, let me do the thinking. You know who you stepped in last night? Yeah, fighter, I guess, but I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Boy, I'll say you didn't. <laughs> you you flattened the next heavyweight champion of the world. He was drunk, though. Oh, yes, yeah, son, but the main thing is you dropped him with one punch. You've got dynamite in that right, kid, and it's worth plenty of dough. Hello, Galahad. Hello, miss. Hello, Nick. Now, what is this Galahad business? It means clean of heart. He was a knight in armor who used to go around rescuing ladies. Yeah? Well, it must have been an interesting racket. Say, uh, what are you working here for, Gooseberry? Well, it's the best job I could get, sir. I want to earn enough money to buy a farm. Farm? Now, you string with me, and in a year, you'll have enough to buy ten farms. Why, with me behind you, you'll go places. Now, how about it? I don't know. Oh, I'd like to earn the money, all right, but... Uh... Nick, if you're going to the racetrack with McFarland, you'd better stop fighting and talking fight and get underway. He's waiting for you in the lobby. I've kept him waiting plenty of times. That was when you had a fighter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Always keeping the count, aren't you? Well, now, uh, think it over, kid. If you want to fight, I'll drop you in a soft spot on Tuesday's card against some preliminary boy, you know, kind of a tryout. Well, if you don't like it, you can quit a hundred bucks to the good, so what have you got to lose, huh? Well, uh, meet you here for dinner, Fluff, and no more of that education stuff. So he wants you to be a fighter. Yeah. You think I should take a chance? Do you? Well, I don't know. It sounds good. I- if I could make enough money to buy a farm, I think I could stand a few pokes in the nose. Mm-hmm. I guess you're big enough to take them. Then you think I should, huh? No, I don't, Galahad. You got mixed up in this on account of me, and the least I can do is to tell you what you're walking into. You'll get thrown in the middle of a rotten life that'll knock those clean-cut illusions of yours higher than a kite. And what's still sweeter... You'll be in the middle of a war between Nick and that gangster Morgan. He'd as soon kill Nick or you or me as take a drink. You're too decent to get mixed up in that kind of life. Well, it hasn't hurt you any. Thanks, Galahad. I got in it a long time ago. Nick's one of the grandest fellows in the world when he likes someone. He's been swell to me. Oh, but don't you see, if he likes me, I'd probably get along all right, too. It wouldn't hurt to try for a while anyway. Well, at least I've got it off my chest. Maybe I'm feeling a little too girl scouty today, huh? Would you come and see my first fight? Yes. Seems I'm always ringside for the first fight and the last. Seven! Eight! Nine! Out! The winner! Lightning! War! Giesenberry! Oh, I never thought... 
thought he'd do it, Nick. You shouldn't have sent him in there. Now, listen, he came out okay, didn't he? He won, didn't he? You aren't any more surprised than I am. What? You mean you sent him in hoping he'd get licked? Now, forget it. Uh, we've got to work fast. We've got to get that kid out of Miami. Why? Now, look, honey, that was Chuck McGraw's brother he knocked out. Get it? Why, if Morgan and McGraw get hold of him, they'll kill him. That kid's dynamite. He's got the makings of a champion. Now, you've got to get him out of here. Grab a train from New York and keep him there. I'll be up next week. Nick, we can't leave you holding the bag like this. Morgan will say you crossed him up. We've got to stay and prove that you didn't. What? Get that kid knocked off? Now, forget it. I'm going to make him heavyweight champion of the world. Now, go on now. I'm going around and stall off Morgan. Open up. It's Nick Donati. Hello, Nick. Hiya, Buzz. Morgan here? Yeah, he's waiting for you. Oh, good. Come on in, Nick. Now, here you're waiting for me, boys. Where's the bellhop? Isn't that funny? I was just looking for him myself. Must have been afraid of you guys and taking the powder. Yeah. Did you sign him up before the fight, Nick? What? Use Max's brother for his first knockout or give him a big publicity break? Oh, oh no, not me. <laughs> they, that would have been double-crossing you. When did you double-cross your mother last? Come here, you. Keep your hands off. No one in this game mentions my family. See, I keep them out of it. I remember that. Okay. Okay. Trying to crawl out from under, Nick? No, oh, no. When I start paying you back, it won't be on Sam. I'll take a fall out of your champion. Paying me back for what? Hand and Burke, 25 grand, a dive. When I have to get it that way, I'll quit the game. You may quit sooner than that if that kid was signed up. Well, why don't you ask him? Yeah. Maybe we will. Yes, well. Well, I'm sorry to leave you boys, but I've got an important date. See you around New York, maybe. Well, how are you? Gee, I'm glad to see you. I thought my wire would bring you to New York on the run. Why? I didn't get any wire. Say, I heard uh, Morgan flew up here. Yes, he was waiting right here for us with a gun and a contract. Oh, yeah? What happened? Ward knocked him cold. One punch. He did? <laughs> what a guy. Uh, it wouldn't have been so funny <laughs> if we hadn't got him out of town. Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, we can bring him back. Say, I know how to handcuff Morgan in this town. Oh, a uh, red cap. Pick that bag. Yes, sir. Nick. Yeah? Why don't you stop before you get started? On what? The kid. There's plenty of mugs you can turn into fighters. Why don't you send him back home where he belongs? Now, listen, I'm going to knock Morgan and McGraw off their perch if it's the last thing I do. I got the right guy to use, and I'm going to use him. Even if it wrecks Oh, him. forget it, will you? Once he started, he'd lead it up. Where is he? At your mother's farm. What? Where... The farm? What are you trying to pull? Nothing, Nick. I just figured it was the best spot. There's just your mother you there. You know I keep my sister away from mugs to leave this kind of life. But Marie's at the convent. No, she's been home for two months. Oh, I didn't know, honestly. All right, all right, forget it. Got the car here? It's right outside. All right, I'll be using it. What are you going to do? Well, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going up to the farm, get that guy out of there. And I suppose she isn't interested in you. Huh? Well, uh, what'd you say, Marie? Well, that girl you're always talking about. Oh, well, you mean Louise. I thought you said her name was Fluff. Oh, that's what they call her, but her name's really Louise. She told me coming up on the train. Mm, I see. You certainly have a way with women. Even Mother thinks you're wonderful. Now, look, Marie, did you come out here to gather eggs or start another argument? Am I annoying you? Yes. You'd probably have a much better time with Louise. Now, look, Marie, I think you've got the wrong idea about Louise. Oh, maybe you have. Well, no matter what you say or anybody else says, I think she's swell. And what makes you think so? Well, she's helped me a lot and given me some good advice. Uh, oh, she... a big sister, too. How sweet. With a mother like yours, I don't know how you could turn out the way you have. Oh, you don't like me? I think you're a spoiled brat. Now, will you get out of here and leave me alone? Of course, Mr. Giesenberry. Goodbye. Hey, Marie. Nikki. Hello, Marie. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Well, how have you been? Just fine. Where's Mom? In the kitchen. Hey, you're growing up, Bambia. <laughs> You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, that's not very often. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, you, you, you finished the convent, huh? Oh, yes, Nick. And why didn't you come for graduation? You promised you yes, would. Yes, I know. You see, I was busy with a fighter. Uh, where's the kid? Your fighter? Uh, he's out in the barn. Oh. Hey, uh, tell me, do you like him? Not in the least. Oh, that's good. Now, you remember what I told you, huh? Now, I don't want you ever getting mixed up with mugs. Mm, you can take him away any time you want to. I'm going to right now. Hey, uh, Gooseberry! 
Hello, Mr. Donati. Well, get your stuff together. We're going back to town. Swell. Hey, I bet Mom's cooking, huh? I'm going in surprise her. Come on, come no, on. Uh, huh? uh, I'll stay out here, Nick. Well, what's the matter? Why won't you... Well, I, I don't want to be there when he goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good, too. Uh, well, I'll see you next time I'm up, huh? Of course. Goodbye, Nicky. Now, so long, Bambina. Take good care of yourself, yeah? Huh? I will. It certainly wasn't nice up here, Mr. Donati. I like farms. Oh, I kept in condition, too, you know, swinging those bales of hay and everything. Anything wrong? Not with me. Oh. Well, I just thought that... Well, anyway, it was great. I hated to say goodbye to your mother. She was swell to me, and so was Marie. Well, I mean... you better forget about them both from now on. Why? I don't like people hanging around them, especially guys in the racket. Oh. All right, if that's the way you want it. Yeah, that's the way I want it. From now on, you'll keep your mind on fighting. Stick with me and do as I say, and we'll get along fine. Cross me up and... Well, it may not be so hot. Understand? Yes. I guess so. Okay. It's up to you, kid. Curtain falls on Act One of Kid Galahad. During our brief intermission, we present from New York City a guest who not only has played leading dramatic roles in Broadway successes such as Julius Caesar and Shoemaker's Holiday last season, but whose sympathetic portrayal has made her the beloved star of that very popular radio daytime serial, Big Sister, which is heard over most of these stations each weekday morning. I refer, of course, to Miss Alice Frost. Miss Frost now gives her impressions of a young mother who, at the end of a long day, accompanied by her small son, Junior, is shopping in a department store. No, Junior, you may not pull Santa Claus whiskers. Why? Because Santa Claus doesn't like you to pull his whiskers. Oh, wait till we get home and you can pull Grandpa's. Oh, I want six cakes of Lux toilet soap, please. Junior, come back here. Uh, yes, uh, six cakes, please. Uh, who, Junior? Where? Oh, no, that's not Cousin Lily. Cousin Lily always wears black. Because poor Uncle Charlie went on a long, long journey. No, not to Newark, dear. He went to heaven. Junior, you mustn't point. No, that lady isn't freckled. She just doesn't have a nice complexion. Oh, shh, it's a friend of Mother's. Oh, hello, Eleanor. Merry Christmas. Junior, say Merry Christmas to Mrs. Edwards. I'm buying myself a Christmas present, Eleanor. Lux toilet soap. I always use it. Yes, just like the screen stars. It has active lather, you know. Junior, don't undo that package. I use it for bath soap, too. It leaves your skin so nice and fragrant. Quiet, Junior. It's none of your business why Mrs. Edwards doesn't use Lux soap. Oh, here's my package. Well, goodbye, Eleanor. We'll run along now. Oh... No, Junior, you can't have those for Christmas. Yes, of course, they're pretty, but only ladies wear those. Shh! Yes, of course, Mother does. No, Junior, you may not run the elevator. No, Junior, no! Thank you, Alice Frost. No matter how busy they are, clever women never forget Lux toilet soap for their complexions. For complexions are important, and it pays to be careful of them. Now, Mr. DeMille. Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett with Wayne Morris and Andrea Leeds return for round two of Kid Galahad. <clears throat> Several weeks have passed. After a period of intensive training, Ward is ready for his New York debut. In the office of the Boxing Commission, Nick Donati faces a crowd of reporters. Oh, there's your builder, boys. Galahad, clean of heart. Gallant rescuer of ladies, but no woman in his life. The strength of ten men, because uh, no dame could get close enough to give him a haircut. Roman gladiator, spot... What do you mean, Roman gladiator? Well, what was he, a Greek? He was an English knight of the round table. Yeah? Oh, well, what's the difference? Swell bill of goods in any language. Gentlemen of the press, I give you Kid Galahad. <laughs> <laughs> Kid Galahad knocks out Mullins. Kid Galahad KOs Gorelli. Kid Galahad ninth straight win. Kid Galahad mobbed by women at theater. 
look at that press book, Silva. It's getting so thick I can't turn the pages. Yeah. You spend a lot of time cutting out the kids' notices, don't you? It gives me something to do. Yeah. Uh, where's Nick, do you know? Search me. Probably in a huddle with O'Brien and his manager. They've been in his hair trying to get an early fight. Silva, yeah. could O'Brien beat Ward now? Why, his grandmother could beat him if he had one. And if she could stand on her feet. What's happened to him? Oh, I don't know. He's been off his feet for a week. Oh, he hasn't hurt. Maybe he's homesick. Well, he acts more like he's in love and not getting anywhere. Hey, have you been seeing much of him lately? Me? Oh, he wouldn't fall in love with me. Uh, don't you kid yourself, Fluff. They don't come any better than you. Well, tell Nick to call me when he gets the phone at the hotel, will you? I will. Hey! Oh, sorry, Silver. Oh, that's okay. How you feeling, kid? Oh, pretty good. Say, I'm, I'm sorry I walked out on you this morning. I'll snap out of it. Sure. I'll see you at the gym. Hello, Louise. Hello, Wood. Looks like Nick's doing all right with his papers. A little more of his doing all right, and we'll have to enlarge the office. I see that the women lost control again. The theater business? <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't much fun. Oh, you're just suffering from an acute case of publicity. Silver says it's got you down. No, it isn't that. I, uh, I came up to talk to you about it, Louise. You know, ever since we met in Florida, you've kind of always told me where I stood. Yes, what is it, Ward? Go on. Well, there's no use talking to Nick about it, and I guess you're the only one to tell me. It's, uh, it's about that time I went up to Mrs. Donati's farm. Oh. I met Marie up there, his sister. Yes. Well, I haven't seen her since. Nick told me to keep away from her, and I guess he's got to say about his own family. But I've never been able to forget her. I, I'm in love with her, Louise, and you know how Nick feels about that. Does she love you? I don't know. Maybe not. But I'd like to see her again. If I did, it would be the first time I ever double-crossed Nick, and, well, I owe everything I have to him. What do you think? Right. I'd go to see her, Ward. Nick hasn't any right to take away people's happiness, and you've been on the level with him all the way. Oh, well, that's swell. I'm glad you think it's okay. I'll go up and see her tomorrow. Sure. Good luck, Ward. If I can find the same happiness that you and Nick have, that's all the luck I want. You've been swell, Louise. Thanks. Oh, Flop. Hey, Flop, where are you? Here, Nick. Oh, I'll uh, dig out a party dress and get it on. We're in for a celebration. You'll find fight, signed, and sealed. <laughs> oh, boy, did I give those cute guys a muscling. 45% and stall them until October. We won't have to meet McGraw until next year. Uh... Hey, what are you doing? What's that grip for? You packing? Yes. What's the idea? I'm leaving, Nick. Leaving? What do you mean? A, a trip? Where? Not a trip. I'm quitting, Nick. I'm washed up. What are you talking about, quitting? After all we've been through? We're sitting on top of the world. What's the matter with you anyway? Have you gone crazy? No, not crazy. I've never lied to you, Nick, and I'm not going to now. I'm in love. What? Like a dizzy fool, I've fallen in love. That finishes us, Nick. I'm licked and I want to get away. Who is he? Ward. The kid? Why? Has he been crossing me up with you? I'll break it. No, Nick, listen. He hasn't done anything. He doesn't know anything about it. I've never even told him. He's square with you. He always will. Oh, you're lying. He fell for you the first time he saw you in Florida. You two started this coming up on the train. Nick, that isn't true, and you know it. Nick, they've been swell years. Let's not spoil them now. It's the breaks, and we can't beat them. You or me either. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've gone a long way together. And you've been swell. I'll never forget that, Nick. No matter where I am. What are you going to do? Go back to work for Tony. He's opening up a new nightclub downtown. Singing? Yes. Will you be at the fight? No. Well, I, I guess that's all. Goodbye, Nick. See you around, Fluff. If ever I can help. Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Stay on that table, kid, till we get them hands taped. Sure. Shut that door, somebody. Yeah. Hey, uh, how's that? Too tight? No, swell. What's the matter, Nick? What do you mean? I don't know. Whatever's eating you. 
This is the first time I've gone into a fight feeling you're not behind me. Ah, you've got the chops, that's all. No, no, look, Nick, you've had something against me for the last couple of weeks. Now, why don't you get it off your chest? All right. Did you and Fluff ever think you were in love with each other? Louise? Yeah. Certainly not. Where'd you get that idea? Well, you left town the day after she walked out. You think I had anything to do with her leaving? Well, wasn't she with you? No, she wasn't. She isn't that type. She's been a swell friend, and that's all. Where'd you go? Well, I... I, uh, I drove up to the country. I didn't even know she'd gone until I got back. Okay. Forget it and keep your mind on tonight. I'll be in there backing you up. Brian leads with a right, but it's short. He's a very tired boy right now. Galahad steps in with a short left. He follows through with a beautiful right cross. That takes O'Brien right down to the toes. Another right, a left, a right. O'Brien's down on one knee. Galahad's over in the neutral corner now. The referee steps in and... Wait a minute! It's all over, folks. He's holding up Galahad's hand. And get down. Wait a minute, just a minute, just a minute, fellas. Now, here's the whole story, and quote me. A fight tonight was only a long-range workout. We're getting the kid into shape, and We don't want we... that stuff, Nick. What's the matter? Well, what about the fight with McGraw? McGraw? Sure, Morgan wants to give you a fight for the championship next month. Who said he does? He did. We just saw him outside. What are you saying, Nick? Yeah, come oh, on, Nick. Now, wait, 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 will you? Now, you're out of luck, boys. There'll be no signing until next year. Next oh, come year. On, keep Nick. quiet, will you? Now, you guys are just as wise to Morgan's frame-up as I am. He knows that as soon as Galahad has reached this peak, he'll take McGraw. They're trying to knock him off now. Sure, but they're going to have the mob yelling for another match. You better let us print something. Okay, okay. Now, let me see. Uh, well, uh, uh, tell them uh, tell him that uh, Nick Donati appeals to the sportsmanship of the American public for fair play. To wait and give Kid Galahad a chance. My Chuck right now is in the class by himself. Galahad just a kid, and he's a lot of work and training before meeting such a magnificent fighter as the champion. That ought to hold him. Oh, oh, I think I'm sorry, boys, but that's it. Fight with McGraw. <laughs> Pretty smart. The kid won't be in McGraw's class for another year yet. McGraw and murderers. Now, where's the kid, Silver? I don't know. He beat it right after he got dressed. Beat it? Where to? Well, he didn't say. Some guy came in and slipped him a note. And he scrambled into his pants like a fireman. Yeah? Well, get on his tail. Find out where he is and yank him back to the hotel. Who does he think he is running out on me? Go on now. Get him. Okay, on my way, Nick. Oh, gee, this is swell, Marie. When I got your note, I, I almost keeled over. How'd you get here? Mother let me come down. Did you see the fight? Oh, yes. Are oh, you hurt? No. Oh, you were wonderful, Ward. Yeah? You think differently about fighting now, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Well, listen, let's go someplace where we can talk. Well, I just wanted to see you. I've got to take the 1230 train back. Oh, no, no, Marie. I'll drive you home. You've never been here before. Let's take a look around. All right. Um, Ward... I wanted to ask you something. Sure, what, Marie? Uh, was it true when you said that, that Louise told you to come up to the farm that time? That's right. I was wrong about her, I guess. I'd like to meet her, Ward. Well, sure, she's singing at Tony's. I'll take you there. Come on. There she is. See, she's coming over this way. Oh, she's lovely, isn't she? Yeah. Louise? Hey, Louise. Hello, Ward. I saw you come in. You're Nick's sister, aren't you? Yes, I am. I've known your brother a long time. Will you sit with us, Louise? Oh, I'd love to. Does Nick know you're in New York? No, uh, don't tell him, will you? Oh, I should say not. Well, Wood, I hear you made short work of O'Brien. Yeah. Marie saw our first fight tonight. Did you enjoy it, Marie? <laughs> a lot, but I was worried. The next thing she wanted to do was meet you. I'm glad. Are you? A few months ago, I didn't think I'd like you. But I do. Very much. Same with me. You know, don't you? Yes. Know what? Oh, you wouldn't understand. There he is, the heel. Come on, lay off. Uh, let me alone. Ward, those two men. It's all right, Marie. Ward, it's McGraw and Morgan. Maybe you'd better get out of here. Get out? Why? Listen, you don't want any trouble. Get out now. Hello, Mr. Gallahan. Hello, McGraw. I hear you yelling, Mr. <laughs> Gallahan. Yeah? Ward, please. Trying to crawl out of a fight, huh? Stand up, yeller. Take a load of it now. <laughs> McGraw, I've had enough of you. Ward. <laughs> Get him You'd better leave now, Ward. It's awfully late. You really shouldn't have brought me home. That's all right, honey. Ward, 
when we came out of that place, there, there was a photographer standing there. What of it? Well, I think he got our picture. Oh, don't worry about it, Marie. I'll see what I can do, though. Maybe if I can get to one of the boys, I can... Stop. Ward, look. It's Nick. Oh, Ward. Oh, you're here, huh? I brought Marie home, Nick. Not satisfied with messing yourselves up in New York. Have to come out here and maul each other. Don't say that. Nick, if you followed us out here... I haven't done enough of you two. You have to sneak around my back to double-cross me. There's no double-cross, Nick. I told you to stay away from her. He's not going to stay away from me, Nicky. You might as well get us straight, Nick. Marie and I are in love. Oh, love. What does she know about love? She's a kid. She's too young. Oh, you don't know anything about me. You're going to stay away from God. I'll do as I like. What business is it of yours? You're never here. You've never lived at home, chasing around everywhere. You do anything you want. The way I live hasn't got anything to do with it. You're different. I'm not different. I have as much right to be happy as you. If you think you're going to keep me cooped up and run my life, you're crazy. We love each other, Nikki. You can't keep us apart. You haven't any reason no. to. Well, how do I know what's been going on between you two? Sneaking into the city. How many times have you been there with him, huh? I've tried to keep you decent. Kept you away from guys. Sent you to a comet. And where do you end up? Going to nightclubs and getting yourself smeared all over the front pages of the smudge sheets like a common rat. No, don't. Oh, boy. You shouldn't have done that. Stand back, Marie. I'm sorry I hit you, Nick, but you can't call her that whether she's your sister or not. I owe you a lot. I've always obeyed your orders in the ring, and I'll keep on obeying them. But outside the ring, you're not going to get away with pushing me around. Or Marie, either. I'm sorry, Nick. Honest, I am. Yeah. What's the dope, Nick? Going to give us a story, Nick? All right, all right. Shut, shut up now. What's the idea of all the phones, Nick? I said that when you guys hear this announcement, you'd all want to get to a phone fast. Well, here it is. Now, Tucky Morgan's been shooting off his face trying to get Kid Galahad into an early match. Oh, yeah, 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 Nick, we know sure, that. Sure, but you said the kid wasn't ready. Oh, did I? Well, I've changed my mind. Galahad fights McGraw next month. Oh, oh, no, no, no. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We've heard Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett with Wayne Morris and Andrea Leeds in the second act of Kid Galahad. In a few moments, they'll bring us act three. And now in our intermission, Mr. DeMille is about to introduce the evening's special guests. But first, a special tip to the men in our audience. Have you found out what a fine bath soap Lux Toilet Soap makes? Gives instant lather, the rich, quick lather a man likes. An active lather that removes perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt from the pores. Leaves skin really clean. Leaves you feeling great. And now, Mr. DeMille. One rainy night in September, 1926, 102,000 people watched Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Just a year later, 104,000 people saw another Dempsey-Tunney battle. These records have not yet been surpassed. Most experts predict they never will be. Tonight, we have the exciting pleasure of hearing two men who held with high honor that championship on which Kid Galahad has set his heart. Jack Dempsey, who is in Buffalo, and Gene Tunney, who is in New York City. To your microphones, gentlemen, and come out talking. Uh, this is Gene Tunney in New York, and just to make sure that Miss DeMille isn't fooling us, I'll ask Jack Dempsey to come in from Buffalo right away. Did you hear the bell, Jack? Coming up, Gene. I understand you've got a very promising fighter up there in Buffalo, Jack. Yes, Gene. I'm handling a boy named Bill Boyd, who's got a fight here tonight, and he looks like a comer. And speaking of comers, if that boy Wayne Morris, who's playing the part of Kid Galahad in the Lux Radio Theater here tonight, ever wants to give up movie acting and become a fighter, I certainly wish he'd let me know. Is he that good, Jack? Well, Gene, I've seen him in person, and I've seen his pictures, and I think he's got a great future in the ring, that is, if he wants it. He's got a good natural style, a good left hand, and he's fast on his feet. Makes me feel homesick <laughs> for the old times. Yes, it does seem a long time ago that we were in there punching ourselves. Incidentally, Jack, I'd like to tell you that you're a much pleasanter fellow on the sending end of a microphone than on the sending end of a left hook. And I'm speaking from experience. 
You know, Gene, every once in a while, just to see how it feels, I throw a left hook at myself, the kind that you would throw at me, except that I make it a soft one and step out of the way real fast. Fleetness of foot, Jack, was ever more desirable for the gladiator. Is that from Shakespeare, Gene? <laughs> no, Jack. The way Shakespeare said it was, to duck or not to duck. That is the question. <laughs> I like it better your way. Well, Jack, when anybody gives me the edge on Shakespeare, I'll take it. Just between two ex-champions, when did you get the biggest kick out of boxing? Gene, I got a kick out of it all the time. But I guess the biggest thrill was that two or three seconds waiting for the bell to start a fight. Any fight. After the referee gave his instructions in the center of the ring, turning around, walking back to my corner, and waiting for the bell. Oh, boy, I know that feeling. I never heard his sound in those few seconds, Gene. I never saw anything but the fellow who was across the ring from me, and I guess he wasn't seeing anything but me. That was the big, big thrill for me. Now, what do you miss the most, Gene? Well, uh, Jack, I'll tell you what I miss the least. It's those left hooks to the solar plexus and those rights behind the ear. Also, those, uh, those meals you got when you were training for a big fight and the trainer thought you were a few pounds overweight. After eight or nine miles of road work, a round apiece with four or five sparring partners, a session with the light and heavy bags. After all that, there's nothing like a nice thin lamb chop and a large helping of spinach to make a heavyweight prospect cry like a baby. And then the trainer says it's healthy. <laughs> but it's still spinach. But 10 or 15 years later, I still remember how hungry I was. Gene, there's one thing I'd like to say to you now. Eleven years after the second Dempsey Tunney fight, when I lost, I'm glad I lost to a square shooter, a great fighter like you, and that's from the heart. Jack, thanks a great deal. Coming from probably the greatest champion of them all, that means a lot to me. And I know you'll join with me, Jack, in what I'm about to say. To any young listeners, let me say that if you want to be an athlete... A champion tennis player, a baseball player, football player, wrestler or boxer. The way to start is from, is by developing a strong, healthy body. And that comes from temperate habits. Don't try to do any of these things strenuously unless you've laid the foundation. I certainly agree, Gene. And I don't think that any boy should take on sports without his parents' or doctor's advice. Take it easy. In the fight game, we call it bringing a boy along slowly. That's right, Jack. Now to Mr. DeMille and the makers of Lux Soap for this opportunity to speak publicly with you. I've, and it's been a very pleasant interlude. Let me say good night, Jack. And I want to say good night to a great champion. And to Gene Tunney, I also say good night, champ. And we say champions both. We leave Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney, and once again in Hollywood, with Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett, Wayne Morris and Andrea Leeds, we ring the bell for round three of Kid Galahad. In cold rage, Nick Donati has laid his plans. Bent on revenge, he's scheduled the championship fight for the following month, knowing that Ward is not ready. In his office, Nick is seated at the desk. He leans back, looking up calmly at Ward and Silver. What'd you start this for, Nick? To pay me back for socking you? Oh, forget the other night. Personal brawls have nothing to do with the fight game. But you wanted to hold off till next yeah, year. Yeah, until I find out how much McGraw's been drinking. This feud breaking in the paper is good for a million-dollar gate. Oh. I had an idea you wanted to get rid of me. Now, look, if I wanted to get rid of you, I'd just drop you cold. I'm giving you a chance now, a big one. Yeah, but what's the idea of telling the papers you're going to send a kid in slugging? Because that's what he's going to do. McGraw's right for it. You can punch better than he can, kid, and you're in perfect shape. Well, I don't like to argue with you, Nick. Now, you're not going to where I get someone else to train him. Now, look, I never did you wrong yet, did I, kid? No. No, you haven't, Nick. And all right. We signed this afternoon. Meet you there at two. Hello? Uh, hello, Barney. Uh, this is Nick. Uh, t uh how are the odds going? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, wait, uh, no, hold, hold off, yeah. Hold off until the night, just before the fight, and then plunk it. Well, you know how. I'll call you later. Now, uh, come in, Morgan. Yeah. They tell me you're still going to send the kid in slugging. Yeah. Yeah, 
Well, it's a good way to lose. Sure. I just learned you're betting 50 grand under cover on McGraw to win. That's right. What are you trying to do, pull another fast one? Now, when I want to take the title from you guys, I won't spend 50 grand to do it. I'm dumping my fighter. The more McGraw cracks him up, the better I'll like him. Oh, the old wheeze that he double-crossed you, huh? No, you saw it in the papers. Yeah. Uh, your sister, huh? Now, you ask me. Take it or leave it. Okay. I'll take it. Certainly. You want to be smart, Morgan. Like me. Yeah, I will. Hello, Bill. Turkey Morgan. Bet another 150 grand on McGraw to win. No, I'm not crazy. Donati's backing it. He better win. He will. If he doesn't, you won't be around to talk about it. Thanks for the tip. I'm scared. He'll be all right. Don't worry. At the longest, it'll be over in an hour. I know, but I'm still afraid that Nicky will try to get back at him some way. Not while there's a chance of taking that title from McGraw and Morgan. Oh, I don't know. I'm glad it's his last fight. Who? Ward. He's going to quit after this. Does Nick know that? No. The first fight in the last. What did you say? Nothing. I just remembered something. All right. All right, Ted. You know your orders. We expect you to go slow and feel him out. Will you get him coming out of his corner and give him the work? Oh, you're wrong, Nick. He can go the distance. McGraw's in better shape no, than I you think. I know what I'm doing. Go in there, swing, you hear? And keep on swinging. Now, go on. <laughs> Yellowhead came out of his corner like a shot out of a cannon. They meet in the center of the ring. Yellowhead lets go with a long right that was dressed to kill, but McGraw backs up and shoots a light left. Yellowhead leads with another long right and a left and a right, but they're all wild. And he takes a hard right jolt to the chin that really hurts. Yellowhead's making the fight again, plowing in there with everything he's got. Leads again with a long right, and he takes a stiff jolt to the side of the head that swings him clear around. McGraw lets go with the right cross, and Yellowhead's down. He's down on his knees in the center of the ring. The referee's starting his count, and it's four, five, six, and he's up again now and hanging on. He's hanging on, folks, and it looks like a bad night ahead for Yellowhead. Round one of McGraw. Round two, McGraw. Round three, McGraw. Round four, McGraw. 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 Go on now. Go on. Stay in there. Keep swinging. Keep swinging. Nick, it's crazy. McGraw's killing him. It's murder, Nick. Oh, shut up. Get out of here. You can't do it, Nick. Huh? So what do you want here? You can't go on with it. I know what I'm doing. We know what you're doing, too. You're murdering that kid because of him and Marie. You're tossing him to Morgan and those dirty wolves to satisfy a grudge. You let that rotten temper throw you off the deep end just like I said it would. Selling out that kid's trust and loyalty. And he's up there fighting his heart out for you, keeping faith with you, because you helped him. And you told me once that someday you'd find a fellow that could go the whole distance and listen to orders all the way. You were going to make him champ. Please, Nick, please, don't do this to him because he loves me. You can't keep me a kid always. I've got a right to love to get married. Oh, I love him, Nicky. Can't you understand? I'll always love him. I'll always be that way, and you can't change it. Oh, please, Nicky, please don't let him get hurt anymore. Okay, okay. Go on, get back to your right, You'll be all right. Go on now. Well, Silver. Yeah? Have 20 cops ready to get us back in the ring to our dressing room. Okay. Oh, Barney. Barney, come here. Yeah, yeah, Nick. Get outside and try to cover our bets. 50 grand on Gallagher. Have you gone oh, nuts? Nice. Get as much extra down on him as you can. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let me have your rod. Yeah. Here you are. You may need it. Well, thanks. Need it. All right. Get him on. Get him down over here. Now, quick. Hey, kid. Kid, how do you feel? Oh, I don't know. Come on now, wake up, wake up. What round is it? Eight coming up. I thought we just got started. That's better. Now, what day is it, kid? Tuesday. Know me? Yeah, Nick. That's it. Now, look, look, we're changing now. Changing, understand? I shot his boat. He's on his heels and breathing through his mouth. Yeah. Now, stall, stay away from him. Run him off his feet. Rest up, understand? Sure. Now, sure. that's the boy. Now, go to it, kid. Eight round the draw. Nine round even. 
Well, Galahad. It's a whole new fight, folks. A complete change of pace. Galahad's boxing. He's shooting him at long range, staying away, counterpunching. He's making McGraw force the fight. And now he's in there again with that left. One, two, three, four left to McGraw's head. McGraw's groggy. He tries to come into a clinch, but Galahad keeps him away. Again, that left and now a right, and McGraw's staggering. He's out on his feet, and now he's down. He's down over there in the neutral corner, and he's trying to pull himself up on the ropes, but he can't make it. He'll never make it. It's seven, eight, nine, ten, and he's out. Kid Galahad is the new champ. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are back in Galahad's dressing room where you're about to hear Nick Donati, Kit Galahad's manager, who coached him through to the championship. All right, Nick, come on in. Thanks. Hello, folks. Well, we had a great fight here tonight. Maybe you thought the kid was in bad shape, Willie, but we knew what we were doing. You see how it worked out. You know, I, I've worked for years with one hope to manage the heavyweight champion of the world, and Kit Galahad crashed through tonight and handed it to me. He's a great fighter, and I'm proud of him. That's all, Mike. Thank you, Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll return you now to Harry Spears. Hey, uh, where's the kid in Silva? They're right, both in the shower room, Mr. Nick. Okay, clear out this place. Don't let anybody in. Oh, uh, kid. Silva. Right here, Nick. Come on in and join them. Watch it, Nick. And keep what? your hands where they are. Oh, he was waiting for us when to come in. Yeah? Hey, yeah, better put up that rod. Put that rod away before it hurts you, Morgan. Don't worry, it won't be me that gets hurt. Just a couple of double-crossing rats. You can't take it out on Silva. He hasn't done anything. Shut up! I've been aching to fill you full of slugs, Nick. Come on, now, use your head, Morgan. You won't get away with it in here. There's cops all over the place. I'll square it with you. Yeah, like you always have. Starting to crawl, huh? Anything you say. Settle it with me any way you want it, but leave these two out. So they can put the tag on me, oh, no. Now, look, you're too used to a machine gun, Morgan. You might miss somebody with that, Roscoe. Now, if we rush through... I'm saving you to last, you cheap two-time rat. Oh! Oh! Oh. You see? See, Morgan... You shouldn't have thrown away that machine gun. Nick. Nick, you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, Nick. Silver, get a doctor, will you? He's bleeding bad. Don't stand there. Hurry up, will you? Get a doctor. Nick. Nick. It's me. Me and Fluff. Hello, kid. We got an ambulance coming, Nick. You're going to be all right. Oh, no. No, he wasn't that bad a shot. Are you... You've got to get well, Nick, for all of us. You know, I, I was wrong, Marie, about the kid. I guess I've been wrong about a lot of things. Swell guy. You, you, you two keep on being in love, being happy. Oh, all right, Nick. A fluff. Am I out of the doghouse? Yes, Nick. Oh, I... I shouldn't have gone away. Oh, well, it's just the breaks. Forget it, Fluff. You were always swell. The kid put up a great fight, didn't he? Took you and me a long time, but we did what we set out to do. He got a champ... Kid Galahad hangs up his gloves. Our play is over. But out of their corners for a final round of personalities come Joan Bennett, Wayne Morris, Andrea Leeds, and Edward G. Robinson. Well, here I am. Mm. Quick comeback for a gent who's just uh, taking a slug between the slats, don't you think, huh? <laughs> I wish you'd save all your quick comebacks for the Lux Radio Theater. <laughs> this is the first time you've come back here in nearly two years. I was beginning to think you didn't like us anymore. Well, now, you've got me all wrong, Mr. DeMille. It's uh, just that I can't listen to your show and be here, too. Now that you've put Mr. Robinson on your program, Mr. DeMille, wouldn't it be nice if he let you act on his? Oh, does Eddie have a program? What? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yes, yes. We have a little weekly chit-chat on the airlines. Uh-huh. What do they call the program? Uh, uh, now, now, don't tell me. Don't right. tell me. It's, uh, it's uh, Hamlet. Little uh, Hamlet. Or, or is it Small Village? <laughs> I don't suppose you're trying to say Big Town. Of course not. Everybody knows that Steve Wilson show. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wise guy, huh? Hey, uh, hey, champ. Yeah, Nick? Uh, uh come, uh, will you, uh, take this fellow out, will you, and slap his ears down? Okay, Nick. Uh, just a minute, gentlemen. I was only trying to prove that I can act. Uh, 
Do you think you can be a tough guy? What I think Mr. Robinson needs, Mr. DeMille, is a good heavy. Oh, it's no use for him to even try, Andrea. His name's all wrong. Sure it is. Who ever heard of a gorilla called Cecil? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I could be the first, you know, Cecil the Turbulent Torpedo. Oh, Cecil the Turbulent. Oh, no, that's terrible. Oh, no, that'll never do. I got the name for you, pal. You're Benny the Bomber. <laughs> the first chance I get, I'll let you be a big town big shot. <laughs> there you are, Mr. DeMell. I guess I put that little deal over in a hurry. Oh, now, just a minute, Wayne. It was Miss Bennett who started all this. Oh, why shouldn't I help Mr. DeMille? Mm. He's a good friend of mine. Seriously, I'm indebted to Mr. DeMille on several scores. First of all, I like to listen to the Lux Radio Theater, and besides that, I like Lux Soap. I've been using it, Mr. DeMille, since the days when the Bennett sisters had their little theater in the backyard. Mm, I certainly agree with you, Joan. I'm a Lux fan, too. And now, Mr. DeMille, this Bennett sister will say good night. Yeah, me too. I gotta get to bed early. <laughs> That's right, Rain. Come to think of it, uh, you're a prize fighter in Broadway Cavalier, your next picture, aren't you? Yeah, I'm trying to have to keep in training. Oh, uh, in case you need a manager, Wayne, look me up. Well, so long, Benny DeMille. I'll be seeing you. So long, Eddie. I mean, Steve Wilson. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good, night. <laughs> Good night, Miss Bennett, Miss Lee, Miss DeMille. Let's have a return match soon. Don't miss the important announcement Mr. DeMille brings you in a moment about our special Christmas program next Monday. In Kid Galahad, you heard Cy Kendall as Turkey Morgan, Edwin Max as Chuck McGraw, Chester Clute as Silver, Ross Forrester as Buzz, Frank Nelson as radio announcer, and Joe Cunningham as a reporter. Mr. Robinson's new Warner Brothers picture is Brother Orchid. Joan Bennett is seen shortly in the Walter Wanger production, Trade Winds, and Andrea Leeds is a Samuel Goldwyn star. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he directed music for Thanks for Everything. Kid Galahad was screened by Warner Brothers, who will soon release an epic of wartime aviation, Dawn Patrol. Mr. DeMille. The motion picture that created the greatest sensation of 1938 comes to the stage of the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. All the characters will be here. Snow White and Doc, Grumpy and Sneezy, Happy, bashful, and sleepy, the wicked queen and the handsome prince, and that close-mouthed little gentleman known as Dopey. This is our Christmas present to you, a classic of folk tales with all the charm that made the film one of the grandest achievements in the history of the screen. And our guest of honor will be the man who made that great picture possible, Mr. Walt Disney. <laughs> Old Father Time will have led us to the joys of the year's happiest day, Christmas. You and I may be far apart, but in the week to come, there's a day when distance is suddenly without meaning. Here in the Lux Radio Theater, we feel a bond of sympathy and friendship between you and ourselves, a sentiment we hope is shared by all of you. For in this Christmas season, we feel the full strength of those ties. I can't deny the pleasure that comes to me as producer of this theater. But infinitely more, I treasure the thought that I can come to your homes as a friend. You're not strangers, but my neighbors, and bring me Christmas in its truest and happiest form. With deep gratitude, I wish you all the blessings and happiness of the season. And joining me in these greetings are the staff of the Lux Radio Theater, and our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap and Lux Flakes. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood and wishing you all a merry, merry Christmas. Be sure and tune in next Monday night to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And now may I give you a parting thought apropos of Christmas. You've got to think of trimming that tree of yours pretty soon. Why don't you do something really different this year? Something that'll start all your friends talking about how original you are. Here's an idea that will make a really beautiful tree decoration. First... Get a large box of Lux Flakes. Yes, that's right, Lux Flakes. Pour them into a big bowl or dish pan, add two scant cups of lukewarm water, and then whip up the mixture with an egg beater. In a few moments, you have a pan full of snow white suds that stand up like stiffly whipped cream. Now that's what you decorate your tree with, those thick white suds. Take them in handfuls and spread them with your fingers along the branches of your tree. Go on doing it till the tree is covered with suds. Now, if you want your tree to sparkle a whole lot, 
Take some of that artificial Christmas snow you can buy in the stores and sprinkle it all over the suds while they're still moist. And there's your tree, all white and glistening as though it had been caught in a real snowstorm. Why don't you try it? It's so easy, anyone can do it. And it's inexpensive, too. And another thing, this kind of decoration makes your tree last longer. You see, the suds cling to the needles so they don't dry quickly and fall off. And, of course, suds last, too. They stay attractive throughout the holiday season. Now, remember, all you need is a large box of Lux Flakes and two scant cups of lukewarm water to whip up a big bowl full of snow. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. To whoever this may impact, sometimes our lives have to be completely shaken up, changed, and rearranged to relocate is where we're really meant to be. Sometimes change feels like loss, transformation is scary, and sometimes to discover the best version of ourselves, we must let go of absolutely everything holding us down. Welcome to I Missed Me, your new safe space. I Missed Me's purpose is to help people all around the world to come back home to themselves. It is a healing self-growth podcast that encourages people to dive deep into their emotions, heal their traumas, and ultimately love themselves. My name is Mafia Sures, I am your host, and I hope to be a part of your healing journey.